In the next stages of my journey would entail trips on 10 separate trains over the course of some 36 hours. It would mean an average of three to four hours per leg with up to 20 minutes between each to find my connections. My tightest changeover will be but a few minutes. That is why I think my World Cup experience is really something special. I arrived in Szczecin, Poland, with no language, no map, no money, and no idea. No worries. I had over an hour till kickoff and a thirst for vodka to pull me through. Szczecin presented one of my most significant challenges yet. No one could speak English, or at least no one would speak English. What I thought were universal gesticulations for football, television, and booze also gained me no ground. The Polish people were simply not very forthcoming, but I knew to expect that. Centuries of being picked on by one's neighbours does not give one a rosy outlook on visitors. My, my jubilation at my surprisingly entry, easy entry was becoming quashed by the fear of not finding the very thing for which I had entered the country. I had about 15 minutes until game time when a boisterous group of young men in immaculate suits caught my eye, my, my ear and my eye. They were heading into the rocket club. I spied a World Cup poster on its door and my hopes ran wild and my jubilance returned as I took the stairs underground. The lights were so dim that I could barely see, yet there was so much to see. About 100 Poles sat in plush, overly comfortable booths. It looked like they had soaked up quite a few liver lifetimes of drink. Others sat at wooden tables in the centre of the room, all were watching a mighty big screen. I approached the bar, cleared my throat loudly and ordered with true Polish pride. One vodka, please. No vodka. Matter of fact from the barman, no vodka. Terribly, visibly disappointed. Oh, okay, perhaps, perhaps then a beer. I felt I needed a strip drink to recover from the shock of finding the only licensed room, probably one of the only rooms in Poland with no vodka in it. <laughs> Nevertheless, I settled back into a back booth with my cold pint of Tyski, only to be promptly kicked out, reserved for some higher class of customer I gathered, moving off to a side table. It was more humble and better suited to me, at least so someone thought. The game was about to start when a small group approached me and asked me which team I thought would win. Poland, I declared, raising my glass with that Canadian-esque keenness to dispel any misapprehension that I was American. Once more, louder for the whole room's benefit. Poland! Polska, came the reply. Oh yes, Polska. I said quietly, eyes down to my beer. The game started. Yet the talking did not subside, especially from the suit gang that sat behind me, jeering and talking, yelling at all the wrong moments. Amazing the way a suit really brings out the sound of one's voice. Suddenly, there came a moment for all Poles to yell. Their team, oh screw it, I'm claiming them, our team scored a goal. I leapt up from my chair as did everyone else, even the plush seated suits. The dark room was lit up by the rarity of beaming Poles. There was a short lived chant in the vein of ole 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 ole, but with the word Polskas, I joined in with gusto, keen to try out my Polskas. The charm was only short lived because the Americans quickly replied with a goal of their own. This brought us all back down for a moment until we saw the goal had been disallowed. We all celebrated again and it barely settled down when Poland scored once again 2 0. My body found a final store of adrenaline. I was bursting with joy. The pain of the last few days completely dissipated. The train journeys, the lack of sleep, the desperation of finding no God vodka, the devastation of finding no vodka, it all fell away. There was a festival atmosphere in the room now. The Poles dropped their guards and I became everyone's friend. Women rushed over to me, speaking so rapidly, I could hear the tears in their tongues. The little Polish I had learned as a child came trickling back. Dobrze, dobrze, I cried. It was all so very good. So the next day, um, on the 15th of June 2002, I wrote, I woke up covered in blood. <laughs> I could taste it in my mouth, feel it in my ears, on my face, all around. I forced my eyes open, stuck shut by the sticky black stuff now on my body instead of within. I could make out shadowy figures around me. Slowly, their contorted faces came into focus. They were as disgusted and as surprised as I was to find me lying there in my own blood. I knew what had happened. It was just my nose. An affliction since childhood, it bleeds with such regularity that, well, it just makes me wonder sometimes. At one stage, it was such a problem that I went to the hospital and they gave me pure cocaine. <laughs> cocaine, to help fix it. <laughs> An ineffective remedy, but one I highly recommend. 
Well worth the price of a punch in the face. <laughs> the fields between Berlin and Shechen had ravaged me with hay fever all the day prior and continued to do so even under the sea. I was lying on a couchette in a train deep in a ferry en route to Copenhagen. Unpleasant surrounds for anyone bloody messed or at best. I grabbed some clean, dirty clothes and headed to the WC to join the queue for the morning ablutions. My bloody face allowed me to jump my head on my place. Everything has its perks. I took the opportunity to strip off and have a full body wash. Here it comes. <laughs> I had not seen myself naked for some time and it gave me rather a shock. I looked a wretched figure, as if covered in blood because someone had carved a few kilos of flesh off me. I've not had a proper look at my willy for a while either. <laughs> It looked sad and small and unfairly unloved. While washing, I had great trouble getting him caught up in the bags that now hang from my eyes, like balloons left hanging up after a party for too long. If only a little prick could make them go away. <laughs> I was pleased to have caught up on a little sleep. Cleanliness was now my main problem. Counting back, I realised with alarm that it had been about 72 hours since my last shower. It might not come as shock, Though to those who know me well, but I bet it to those who might slip near to on the train. My little bloodletting stunt had completed a masterpiece in filth. I reminded myself of a chap I had once sat with a, next to an unforgettable overnight bus ride. He stunk with such enthusiasm that I wretched whenever he talked and had to wash myself and all of my clothes, including those sealed in my bag, to try to remove the man from my life. <laughs> to this day, his stench remains seared in my brain. I was brought back to, by, to reality by what I thought was a knock on the door, but it was only one of my socks trying to make a break for it. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed, dragged the scared, slimy little sucker back and slid it under my foot. I could feel that the train was stopping at Malmo. I rushed to a window. I had never seen a train pull out of the ferry before and thought it quite a neat trick. I felt like a flea on a rabbit in a hat. So, <laughs> going through this World Cup and, and reading on the book and looking and reflecting and having that sense of reverie has been really nice. And a couple of things might come out very much for me. One is, one is youth. Um, eight years can make a big difference, I suppose, in your, in your, in your energy. And I look at this and go, you know, why? How? What? <laughs> Who is this guy? Um, uh, but I know it's me, and, and when I read it, I think, I think he's got issues. <laughs> I think there's something to, to do it, to write it, to, to, to publish it. I, you know, it's, it's, but I'm inspired by the energy that comes out of this. And the other, so the other thing, aside from youth, that come out of this, is pure mania. It's just absolute, un unchecked, unrecognised mania for one month. Um, and, and, and so that's a lot of fun, and this was a height of a boom cycle. Um, uh, but there's been a few boom-bust cycles, and, uh, and, and uh, that's steadied quite a bit. And so now I'd like to also acknowledge my partner, Sally Breed, um, who made the cakes. Um, um, <laughs> and uh, supported me through uh, editing this. And um, look, Sally's take on this when she saw the cover she said, we, we don't have to grow old together. We already have grown old together. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to you? <laughs> uh, yes. um, but I, I think there are a number of factors, but I, I, I do think Sally's helped to, um, uh, to moderate <laughs> me and, uh, and, and help the creative things come out in a, a more uh, sort of healthy tempo. Um, so I'm very grateful for that too, Sal. Thank you. Um, so I think very touching to see so many people here, and I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, it's really, you know, very, very nice, very nice that people bothered to, to say thank you and come. So we'll see if anyone will bother to buy the book. <laughs> I'll be over here. What's the day? Here you go. Thanks so much for that. No worries. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 15, 14 day terms. <laughs> and RBA plus 8% monthly. Very <laughs> <Through> monthly. <laughs> you don't pay on time. <laughs>